In Jesus' name we pray. Give me another Delta State. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for such a special time today. A special Bible study. Lord, we pray you open the eyes of everyone here today in Jesus' name. Amen. I will pray, Lord, great things. Amen. Wonderful things. By your word and through your word, you will grant to everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. Let the truth come. Let the truth penetrate every heart. Saturate every life. Turn every life around. That Lord, by the teaching of the truth tonight, every life will come to that turning point. And you make us, Lord, to get out of where we are and to get to where you have appointed for every one of us in Jesus' name. Open our ears. Open our eyes. Open our mind. Open our heart. And let this word do good in every life. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. I welcome you to our special Bible study tonight. Everybody Every Monday, we normally have a Bible study. And as we have the Bible study here in Worry tonight, all those who are connected want you to understand it's still the same series of Bible study. But just that this day is coming to you from worry over here in Delta State. And all of us who are here, those who are coming for the first time, and those who have been studying with us before, I pray that today will be a turning point in every life in Jesus' name. Do you have your Bible there? Where is the Bible? Raise it up and let me see. You'll conquer the devil with that Bible. You'll conquer every problem with that Bible. Because we're talking about the truth. And Jesus said, Ye shall know the truth. And the truth will make you free. You're free tonight. In our series of Bible study, we're now in the third epistle of John, chapter 1. Actually, it has only one chapter. The third epistle of John, chapter 1, just one chapter. I'm going to study with you tonight from verse 9 all, to, all through to verse 14. But just to back up a little bit. For you to understand what we've been talking about. What we've been learning from John, the apostle. John, the beloved. If you look at verse 3, it says, For I rejoiced greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. You'll find there the mention of the word truth two times. It says, the truth is in you. You heard the truth. You accepted the truth. You believed the truth. You retained the truth. And that truth dwells within you. And people saw the effect of that truth. And people could see. The reflection of that truth in your life. And then he tells us in verse 4. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. A question. Why did John concentrate on the truth? Why did he center his mind on the truth? Why did he write about the truth why was it his great joy that anyone he saw that person walked in the truth and it cost him great great joy 
Look at John, Gospel according to Saint John. And here I'm reading to you from verse 32. John chapter 8. And we're reading from verse 32. You open your Bible as I call the reference. It says in verse 32. And you shall know the truth. Tell me what follows there. And the truth shall make you free. John wanted freedom for the people. Freedom from sin. Freedom from Satan. Freedom from evil spirit. Freedom from sickness. Freedom from all the problems of life. And he knew there was just one sin. Just like there is just one sin today. That can bring you freedom. Total freedom. Permanent freedom. Great freedom. And that is the truth. That's why Jesus said. And you shall know the truth. Before you know the truth. You will hear the truth. Before we can say you know the truth. You understand that truth. And before that truth begins to walk in your life. You abide in that truth. I believe the truth. And because I believe it. I live by it. I stand for it. Then it begins to walk in your life. Today that truth will walk in your life. The truth that John the beloved spoke about. Number one. Truth revealed by Christ. Number two, it was truth recorded in the Bible, revealed by Christ. You are not there. I was not there. If somebody did not try it down, how do you know? How would you know? He revealed it. And they recorded it. And the Holy Spirit recalled it to remind us, look at the truth. See the truth accept the truth and then eventually now as we come to the truth the truth is reflected in our lives and the power of the truth works unmistakably in our heart and in our life today it will work in you in jesus name this is the truth divine truth the gospel truth the truth that saves. The truth that forgives. The truth that purifies. The truth that sanctifies. The truth that empowers you. You were weak before. After this Bible study tonight, as the truth enters into you, you will be strong. Somebody there said you will be strong. Because the truth strengthens us. And the truth transforms us. That means it changes us. It turns us around. And it gives us the turning point. And a great miracle takes place in our lives. It's the truth that sustains us. And it's the truth that transports us from earth to heaven. That's why we're interested in the truth. That's why we're teaching the truth. That's why we're following the truth. And that's why we want to abide in the truth. Now, we come to verse 9. Which is the study of today. John, the beloved, says in verse 9, I wrote unto the church. What did he write? He wrote the truth. What truth? Divine truth. I wrote unto the church. What did he write? Gospel truth. Saving truth. The truth that comes into our lives. He wrote that to the church. I wrote unto the church. But Diotrephes. What a name. Diotrephes who loveth to have the preeminence among them. Received us not. Do you know there are people that do not receive the truth. They reject the truth. They cast away the truth. They sold to error. They committed to falsehood. They give it to deception. 
And when the light of the truth comes, they say, no, no, no. We don't want the truth. And we're giving the name of this man, Diotrephes, or the bad example. That when the truth came, he rejected the truth. Verse 10. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds which he doeth preaching against us with malicious words and not content, not satisfied, not just staying in that position, there we is neither does he himself receive the brethren, the brethren that brought the truth, the brethren that spoke the truth, the brethren that preached the truth. No, Diotrephes will not receive them and forbidest them that would and casted them out of the church. He had a bad attitude. He had a bad reaction. He had a bad example. And as an example, God wants us to avoid. Come to verse 11. Are you there? I said, are you there? Give me the first word in verse 11. Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil has not seen God. Demetrius, another name, another kind of man, another believer, a good one. I'll be a good one. I said I'll be a good one. Demetrius in verse 12 has good report of all men and of the truth itself. Yea, and we also bear record. And ye know that our record is true. I had many things to write unto you. But I will not write with ink and pen unto thee. But I trust I shall shortly see thee. And we shall speak face to face. Peace be unto thee. I thought somebody there will say amen. Peace be unto thee. A friend salute thee. Greet the friends by name. Tonight as we look at this passage. And we go through those verses very clearly. In a systematic way. The title of our Bible study tonight is following a life transforming example. Following a life transforming example. You'll see here, there are two people shown to us. Number one, Diotrephes. Number two, Demetrius. And then you, number three, the disciple. Number one, Diotrephes, he had a bad example. And that's an example we must avoid. Demetrius, he has a good example. And that's an example we ought to follow. And then the disciple, you there tonight, that will make your choice. You see a bad example, uh-uh, I will not follow that. And you see a good example, yes, that's my man. That's my example. That's a model for me. That's the pattern for me. And I want to follow a good example. Diotrephes rejected the truth. Demetrius received the truth. And you today, the disciple, you want to remain in the truth. One rejected. The other one received. And I will remain in the truth. Say that for yourself. I will remain in the truth. 
I can't hear you. I will remain in the truth. Following a light transforming example. You see, if you're going to follow the truth, if you're going to live in the truth, you have to declare 100% from the depth of your heart. Here is the truth. I will follow the truth. And it means you will turn your back on error. You will turn your back on falsehood. You will turn your back on deception. You cannot follow two divergent and two different roads at the same time. You cannot follow truth and error at the same time. You cannot follow right and wrong at the same time. You cannot follow Christ and Satan at the same time. To follow the truth implies I forsake error. I forsake falsehood. I forsake deception. And I make up my mind. I choose the way of truth. Tonight, that will be your choice. I said tonight, that will be your choice. I choose the way of truth. I'm looking at Psalm 119. Psalm 1. One nine, and I read here from verse thirty. Mark it in your Bible. Psalm one hundred and nineteen, verse thirty. I have chosen the way of truth. Thy judgments have I laid before me. Your righteousness, your truth, the gospel. The reaching word have I laid before me, following a life transforming example. I'm going to divide that passage to three parts one, two, three. One, I look at Diotrephes, two, I look at Demetrius, three, I look at you, the disciple. Something will change in your life. Something will turn around in your life. A turning point has come for you today. And I rejoice with you. Something good, something great will happen to you in Jesus' name. Number one. Number one. The many transgressions of the proud. The many transgressions of the proud. Does that man that sought preeminence number two the marvelous transformation of the pure pure in heart pure in life pure in motive pure in his relationship with god the marvelous transformation of the pure number three the master's teaching for more progress you will make progress Progress in your Christian life. Progress in your spiritual life. Progress in your family. Progress in the church. And progress in the work of your hand. I want an amen from Delta State. Point number one. Tell me number one over there. The many transgressions of the proud let's come to this we're looking at third john verse 9 i wrote unto the church but diotrephes who loveth to have preeminence among them receiveth us not hold on diotrephes who loveth to have preeminence among them receiveth us not look at that verse 9 once again it says i wrote unto the church when you're reading something and it's been flowing and saying something good and then there is an interjection of the word but that means something negative something not very good Something that is not beneficial is coming. That's why it says, I've written to the church 
I wrote the truth to the church. The divine truth to the church. I wrote the gospel truth to the church. I wrote the light transforming truth to the church. But the old trophies that wants to have, loves to have, desires to have preeminence among them receiveth us not not only that he did not receive he has not changed his mind he still does not receive that truth today he receiveth us not why because he loves to have preeminence among them that what preeminence comes up only one or the time in the new testament and as you look at colossians chapter one colossians chapter one i'm reading from verse 16 for by him talking about christ were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him created by christ and created for christ and he christ is before all things and by him all things consist look at verse 18 and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he and he alone, he might have, tell me the next word there, the preeminence that's about Christ, the head of his church and he christ the savior he christ the one who died for you on the cross of calvary he christ the only begotten son of the father he christ the only one qualified appointed anointed to save us he has the preeminence but now diotrephes wanted to take the place of christ in the church he had the spirit of the antichrist the spirit that wants christ to step aside and he wanted to take the place of christ and so when the truth came and when the preachers of truth came when the saving truth came when the transforming truth came he will not accept he will not receive and the people in the local church that wanted to receive that truth stopped them and those who will not stop and they said we want the truth we accept the truth we believe the truth we're sold to the truth we're giving to the truth we surrender our lives to the truth okay if you are going to do that you cast them out of the church what a bad attitude what a spirit the spirit of the antichrist that shows how proud he was because he rejected the truth in second thessalonians chapter 2 second thessalonians i'm reading from chapter 2 and i'm reading here from verse 4 second thessalonians chapter 2 what did in verse 4 who opposes and exalteth himself above all that is called god can you imagine that that's the antichrist or that is worshipped so that he as god sitteth in the temple of god showing himself that he is god that's actually the antichrist the antichrist that will still come with a capital a but 
there's a spirit of the Antichrist still war that's already working today. Look at verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now letters will let until he be taken out of the way. How do you know? The spirit of the Antichrist. How do you know? When the spirit of the Antichrist has grabbed a man, seized a man, and is influencing that man, like Diotrephes, look at verse 9. Even him, even him, who's coming is after the working of Satan with all power, authority, and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that was the next word there perish the people who reject the truth who hate the truth the people who will not receive the truth because the truth is the only thing that saves the truth from heaven the truth from christ the truth of the gospel the truth that turns your life around if somebody rejects that that person cannot be saved he'll perish thank god i will not perish i said thank god i will not perish it says in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved and for that reason for that cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. If somebody does not believe the truth, he'll believe a lie. If somebody does not accept the truth, he will accept a lie. If somebody will not embrace the truth, he'll embrace a lie, falsehood, error, and deception. And then he goes on to say in verse 12 that they all might be damned. Who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. That's a person like Demetrius. And you see what Demetrius, look, at, come back now to Sir John. And let's see something about this Demetrius. Sorry, about Diotrephes. Diotrephes is his name. Number one, he loved preeminence i've read that to you already he wanted to be the top level man there he wanted to be the number one there he wanted to be the authority over there in that local assembly and he wanted to be the decision maker in their lives and he said if i don't accept the truth then you can't accept the truth if I don't receive the truth, then you cannot receive the truth. He was going in the way of perdition, in the way of destruction. And he said, you must be like me. And if somebody said, ah, ah, I will not be like you. I've known the truth. I've heard the truth. I'm going to believe the truth. I'm going to stand by the truth. Then this man, Diotrephes, will cast him out. He'll say, okay, since you want to go to heaven without me, then get out of the local assembly. There are people like that today. They say, what I don't know, what right have you to know that? The truth I have not discovered. What right have you to discover that? And if you say, I've read in the Bible, I see this in the Bible, this is the truth. I'm going to stand by this. Then they say, okay, if you are going to stand by that, they excommunicate them. And they do not want people to know the whole truth of the word of God. He, he loved preeminence. Number two, he received us not. Us apostles. You know, John was talking and John included himself. And John was the last of the apostles of Jesus Christ. That knew him face to face. That saw him face to face. And he had the truth. The totality of the truth from Christ. And now John broached that truth. That he had from Christ face to face. And the man said no. He received not the apostles of Christ. That knew the truth. Number two. Now number three. He forbade 
forbidding others who wanted to receive the truth. He says, no, I'm not just going to stay in darkness. Everybody must stay in darkness with him. I'm not just going to stay in error. Everybody must stay in error with him. And error cannot save. Error cannot sanctify. Falsehood cannot purify your life. And false doctrine cannot change your life. And the man did not have the totality of the truth. And he said, I want to remain in ignorance. And everybody else with him must remain in ignorance. Number three or number four, he was preaching against them. Shouting, talking, malicious words, bad words against the preachers of the truth. Have you seen people like that that will shout talk reel hola do all those things and say things that are evil against the preachers of the truth that's like diotrephes a bad example i pray you'll not follow that example i said you'll not follow that example and then the people that were receiving the truth he drove them out he said no you cannot receive that truth and stay here there's some people when they hear about the truth of holiness without holiness no man shall see the lord they say ah uh -uh, don't bring that one here i read it in the bible i saw it in the bible i learned it in bible uh -uh, we don't want the bible to that extent we want religion we don't want holiness and if you stay like that and you say no i'm going to keep on living a righteous life because i've seen in the word of god follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the lord they might cast you out of their assembly that's like diotrephes because the people that receive the truth it cast them out but as being cast out of a local earthly assembly if you are saved if you are born again if you are a child of god and you are living a life that glorifies the lord i will see you in heaven in jesus name and then not only that he was an evil person evil look at verse 11 it says beloved follow not that which is evil it's referring to that man now. There's a Diotrephes that was evil. And he says, don't follow that example. He says, don't live like that man. He says, don't follow that falsehood. Because those who follow error, they're following Satan, you know. Those who follow falsehood, they're following darkness. And he wants you to follow just what is revealed in the word of God as the truth and then he says anyone that is not abiding in the truth is of the evil one he has not seen god what does that mean he has not seen the god of grace the god of salvation the god that is holy the god who is love and the god who lives in heaven who is going to take us to heaven on the basis that we hear the truth, believe the truth, understand the truth, and allow the truth to dwell within us so that eventually with that truth will get to heaven. And so we see the many sins of the proud. Before I leave that point, let me talk about the source of many transgressions what do people transgress why do people sin why do people go astray number one the source of many transgressions actually it's pride that causes sin look at psalm 10 open your bible this bible study psalm 10 i'm reading from verse 4 in Psalm 10, reading from verse 4, it says, The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. Is not God, is not in all 
his thoughts. It says the wicked, the unsaved, the sinner, the transgressor, the evil man, the evil woman. Look at this. It says through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God because of his pride God is not in all his thoughts look at Psalm 59 here I'm reading from verse 12 Psalm 59 and we're reading from verse 12 talking about the source of many transgressions was a source pride it's pride that makes people to forget God and the commandments of the Lord look at verse 12 over there in Psalm 59 it says for the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips let them even be taken in their pride and for the cursing and lying which they speak is telling us that those who tell lies or they tell lies oh because i don't want them to think i'm that bad did i do that if i tell them and accept i did that they look down on me and because of pride that's what they tell the lies they tell and it says the words of their mouth the sin of their mouth and the words of their mouth it says is coming out of the heart of pride psalm 73 in psalm 73 reading from verse 6 psalm 73 reading from verse 6 talking about the source of many transgressions it says therefore Pride compasses them about as a chain. Violence covers them as a garment. It's saying it's a pride that causes the violence. It's a pride that also causes all the evil things, wicked things that they do. Look at the next verse, verse 7. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than their hearts could wish. They are corrupt. Why? Because of their pride. And they speak wickedly. Why? Because of their pride. Concerning oppression. And they speak loftily. Why? Because of their pride. They set their mouth against the heavens. Why? Because of their pride. And their tongue walketh through the earth because of their pride see the pride that causes the sin proverbs chapter 28 in proverbs chapter 28 reading from verse 25 proverbs 28 verse 25 he that is of a proud heart stireth up strive the people that love a fight it says it's pride they want to prove i can conquer you i can defeat you i can put your back to the ground okay if you don't accept that if you don't believe that let's prove it let's try the strive is by pride and those who beat their wives violence at home and those who do evil to their husbands, violence at home. Why? I want to say that I'm stronger. I want to say I am the one in authority. I control things. And because of that pride, the strive in society, in the community, anywhere you find strive. It says it is coming from the foundation, from the fountain, and from the source of pride. That verse 25 begin. He that is of a proud heart. Stireth up strive. But he that putteth his trust in the Lord. Shall be made fat. Your trust will be in the Lord. 
I said your trust will be in the Lord. The Lord confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. First Timothy chapter 6. First Timothy chapter 6. Verse 4. He is proud. Knowing nothing. But doting about questions and strives of words whereof comes envy, strive, readiness, evil surmises. You see that this New Testament now telling us the same thing, confirming the same thing that the Old Testament had said that the people who dwell in strive in envy in jealousy and they want to destroy other people's lives scatter other people's families it says they do that because of pride in verse 5 perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds destitute of the truth supposing that gain is godliness what follows there? I said what follows there? Tell me out loud. From such withdraw thyself. Look at this. I've spoken to you about the source of many transgressions. Let me follow by telling you the suffering of eternal torments. The suffering of eternal torments. Torment. We're looking at Proverbs chapter 16. Proverbs chapter 16. And we're reading from verse 5. Proverbs 16 verse 5. It says, everyone that is proud. How many people? Tell me out loud how many people? Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Everyone, a man, a woman, a church man, a church woman, a religious man, a religious woman, an officer with a great, great title in a denomination anywhere anyone it says everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the lord look at this though hand join in hand he shall not be unpunished that means he'll be punished whoever that man is that will not come down from the tower of pride and bend low before the Lord and humble himself and humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord. He said, There will be punishment for him. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, pride goes before destruction and an haughty spirit before a fall. I pray you will not be destroyed. I thought you'll say, Amen. And I pray that you will not fall in Jesus' name. We come now to point number two. I've shown you the example to avoid. The example to forsake. The example to run away from. Now we come to a good example. So John, that's chapter one. So John, we're reading here from verse 11. In so John... Reading from verse 11, it says, Beloved, follow not that which is evil. Don't follow the example of Diotrephes, the bad example, the man that loves preeminence, the proud man, the one that will be punished. It says, Beloved, who is a beloved person? Somebody who is saved. Who is a beloved person? Somebody who is saved. Somebody who had realized that the way of sin leads to destruction. That the way of sin 
will lead to punishment eternal punishment and because of that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves they come down from the high tower of pride they humble themselves and they seek my face and they pray and they turn from their wicked ways then God says I will hear from heaven I will forgive their sin I will heal their land once you turn away from sin I'll say Lord I want forgiveness I want a change of life I want a new life I do not want to go the way of the proud but I want to go the way of a child of God he says as many as received him to them he gave power to become the sons of God even to them that believed on his name so as you turn away from that place of pride from that path of pride then you say Lord I come to you I know that Jesus Christ died for me on the cross of Calvary and now I bend low beneath the cross of Christ and I want you to save me I want you to forgive me I want you to change my life and transform my life he purges your sin he pardons your sin and then he purifies you then you become the pure and we have the marvelous transformation of the pure you know there's nobody who is naturally pure you know some people say you know me i'm naturally pure nothing like that all have sinned and come short of the glory of god all have been stained by the life of evil by the life of sin and by the life of wickedness but if you're going to become the pure and then there's going to be marvelous transformation in your life you will realize i have sinned then you come to the lord in repentance and with that repentance you rely on the lord for a change of heart a change of life a change of direction that you turn away from where you were going before and now you go the way of the lord when the blood of jesus christ has covered your sin has cleansed your sin has pardoned your sin has purged your sin has totally removed the power of sin away from your life then you are pure and after that purity now you can see the transformation in your life come back to third john and here we're looking now at verse 12 it says demetrius what a name a different person now has a good report of all men and of the truth then it says yea that means yes and we also bear record and you know that our record is true here the lord is telling us number one follow not that which is evil follow not that which is evil are you saved don't follow evil are you born again don't follow evil as your sin been forgiven it says number one for you to know follow not that which is evil as he purified you sanctified you changed your life made you holy follow not that which is evil exodus chapter 23 exodus chapter 23 i'm reading from verse 2 in exodus chapter 23 verse 2 it says thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment it says know the truth 
Accept the truth. Hold on to the truth. Embrace the truth. Live by the truth. You'll see a multitude of people that are doing evil. It says, follow not that which is evil. We're looking at First Thessalonians chapter 5. In First Thessalonians chapter 5, reading from verse 22. First Thessalonians chapter 5. We're reading from verse 22. It's telling us how our lives can remain in the grace of God. How our lives will remain in the purity that he has given unto us. How we'll remain pure in heart so that we will see the Lord on the final day. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 22 abstain from all appearance of evil abstain from all appearance of evil as you look at third john look at that verse 12 again it's telling us now that we need to follow that which is good back up to verse 11 beloved follow not that which is evil but that which is good if you are born again you'll follow that which is good i said you'll follow that which is good you'll see bad examples around you at school in the college at the university bad examples are everywhere in every city in every community you'll see bad examples there but if you're saved if you're born again you'll not follow that which is evil you'll follow that which is good follow that which is good in uh, first thessalonians chapter 5 first thessalonians chapter 5 we're reading from verse 15 first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 15 see that none render evil for evil unto any man but ever follow that which is good but ever follow ever follow always follow only follow ever follow that which is good both among yourselves and to all men that's the result of salvation. That's the result of being cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. We follow only that which is good. We follow always that which is good. We follow ever that which is good. First Peter chapter 2. In First Peter chapter 2, verse 21. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us. He suffered for us to give us salvation. He suffered for us to give us forgiveness. He suffered for us to give us new life. He suffered for us to take us out of sin and to take us into fellowship and relationship with the heavenly father and he says now after he suffered for us verse 21 leaving us an example the example of jesus that's a good example the example of the savior that's a good example the example of the very son of god the only begotten son of god that is a good example that we should walk that he should follow his steps that he should follow his steps in such john reading from verse 12 now so john reading from verse 12 it says demetrius has a good report of all men having a good report of all men that's what the lord expects of you and of me as children of god as a people of god as those who are saved those who have been forgiven and those whose lives 
have been transformed. The word of God says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. It says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. You accept that? I said, are you there? If any man be in Christ, it's a new creature. Old things are, tell me, passed away. And behold, all things are become new. Such a person will have a good report before all men. Matthew chapter 5. In Matthew chapter 5, reading from verse 16. Matthew chapter 5, reading from verse 16. Here the Lord Jesus Christ said to his own followers, to his own disciples, to the people who are candidates of heaven, to the people who have been washed, who have been cleansed, to the people who have believed, and now they are following after the Lord, so they can reflect the truth in their lives. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Let your light so shine. How? Before who? Tell me out loud. Before men. So people around you will know what it means to be saved. So the people around you will know what it means to accept the truth, believe the truth, and reflect that truth in your life. So he said, let your light so shine. The light of the truth. The light of Christ. Who is the light of the world. And the light that you have experienced of the life of Christ. Let your light so shine before men. That they may see your good works and glorify your father. Which is in heaven. I pray that that light will shine in your life in Jesus' name. Ephesians chapter 5. In Ephesians chapter 5, from verse 1. Ephesians chapter 5, reading from verse 1. It says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Don't follow Satan. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Don't follow Diotrephes. Be ye followers of God as dear children. Don't follow the bad example of the proud. Of those who strive. Of those who fight. Of those who sin. Of those who follow evil. It says, if you are following Christ... If you're a child of God, if you have got the truth, you have accepted the truth, you have embraced the truth, and you want to follow the truth, you want to demonstrate the truth, it says, be ye therefore followers of God, as dear children, and walk in love, as Christ also has loved us, and has given himself for us. An offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. Look at verse 3. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints, neither filthiness, no foolish talking, no jesting. Which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For ye know that no monger, adulterous person, a fornicator, no an unclean person, no covetous man who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you. With vain words, with false words, with evil words, erroneous words, deceptive words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. 
Be not therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now ye are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Well, walk as children of light in Jesus' name. And then you come back to Third John. In Third John, it talks about the good report that we have before men. But now he's talking about the good report that even the truth bears concerning us. Third John verse 12 again, Demetrius has a good report of all men and of the truth itself. Yea, and we also bear record. And ye know that our record is truth. We must have the record of Christ, the truth himself. The spirit of God, who is the spirit of truth, must bear witness to the very fact that we have come out of error. We have come to the truth. We have come out of falsehood. We have come to the truth. We have come out of evil. And we have come to that which is good in luke chapter 10 luke chapter 10 reading from verse 20 luke chapter 10 verse 20 here christ bore witness and he gave record concerning the 70 that came and you want the lord to be able to bear record concerning you that by the grace of God, things are not the same anymore. Your life is now different. You have heard the truth that saves. And you have surrendered your life to Christ the truth. And you are saved. And your name is written in the book of life in heaven. In Luke chapter 10 verse 20. It says in verse 20, Notwithstanding, rejoice in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Those are people who are saved. Those are people that God himself bears witness concerning them that their past life is gone and a new life has now come that new life will be seen in your life in jesus name and the lord will be a record concerning you that you are one of his own children in hebrews chapter 11 hebrews chapter 11 Reading from verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. By it, the elders obtained a good report. The elders obtained a good report. God testified concerning them. They were saved. They were changed. They were transformed. A turning point came in their lives. Then you have in that Hebrews chapter 11, a lot of names from Abel to Enoch to Abraham to Isaac to Jacob to Moses to the rest of them. God will be a witness concerning you. Give me good amen. Revelation chapter 14. In Revelation chapter 14, I'm reading from verse 4. Revelation chapter 14 verse 4. These are they which are not defiled with women. For they are virgins. For they are virtuous. You see these people. Heaven bore record concerning them. Virtuous people. Righteous people. Saved people transformed people heaven will be a record concerning you 
These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouths was found no guile, no deception. Not anything untruthful. In their mouth was found no girl. They always spoke the truth. Because they have accepted the truth. Because they have embraced the truth. For they are without fault before the throne of God. We we'll see number one. The many transgressions of the proud. We'll see number two, the marvelous transformation of the peer. Now we come to the final point, the master's teaching for more progress. Somebody there, you'll make more progress. I said you'll make more progress. Let's come to Third John chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 13. He said, I had many things to write, but... I will not waste ink and pen right unto you. What was he saying? The apostle was saying, Many things I want to teach you. Many things I want to write unto you. Many things I want to make you know. But I cannot do that in one single message. Therefore he said, I will stop here. But I will see you later. So that I can reveal to you more. Of the master's teaching. So that you make more progress. Many things he wanted to say to them. Many things he wanted to write unto girls. Many things he wanted him to know. Of the truth. The power of the truth. The transforming power of the truth. The transforming nature of the truth. But he said. I'll hold on. And later reveal the rest of you. We're looking at John chapter 12 and see what jesus christ himself told his own disciples we're looking at john chapter 16 verse 12 i have yet many things to say unto you but ye cannot bear them now in verse 13 how be it when he the spirit of truth has come. He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear. That shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Christ had told his son disciples. When he was with them here on earth. The same thing. He said, I have yet many things to say. Many things to teach. Many things to reveal. Many things you need to learn. So, don't think I've got everything. I'm saved. Wonderful. You've not got everything. I'm sanctified. Wonderful. You've not got everything. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Marvelous. You've not got everything. He says, when the spirit of truth has come. It will guide you into all truth. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 11. Hebrews chapter 5. And we're reading from verse 11. So you will see that what John said. That wasn't peculiar to John alone. He said in verse, this Paul the Apostle now, Hebrews chapter 5 verse 11, Of whom we have many things to say, and had to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. He says, many things we still have to say. Many things you still have to learn. He said, but we cannot say that now. Chapter 6 verse 1, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. Let us move on 
let us make progress the apostle wanted these people to make progress and we're going to make progress i said we're going to make progress uh, that's why we'll continue the teaching every monday today you have heard but you have not heard everything and we'll still continue next monday and we transmit everywhere like we're transmitting from here today to the rest of the world we'll be transmitting from another place and you find out the nearest place to you and we've not taught everything many things are still coming it will come your way in jesus name and you will receive the truth and you'll learn the truth and the truth will work in your life and the truth will transform your life and the truth will transform your family and the truth will take you from earth and take you to heaven in jesus name i'm coming to third john third john we're looking at verse 14 but i trust i shall shortly see thee but i trust i shall shortly see thee and we shall speak face to face john when you see girls face to face what are you going to speak it says the truth i told him already i still have many things to tell him many things to testify many things to teach and when i see him face to face i reveal many other things to him and when you meet with me over the satellite you meet with me or when i come again we'll continue to reveal the truth to you and this truth will not leave you where you are you'll get up you'll make progress in jesus name peace be unto thee delta state peace be unto thee what did john mean by that number one peace with god being justified by faith we have peace with god if a sinner is there and i'm sure you are there because all i've seen i come short of the glory of god the sinner does not have peace there is no peace there's no rest says the lord unto the wicked if the peace is going to come you're going to surrender your life to the lord jesus christ and say i want to be justified i want my sins to be forgiven i want all these unrest in my soul all the restlessness in my soul i want you to be taken away and then peace will come unto you number one the peace Peace with God. Number two, peace in Christ. You know what Jesus said? My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth it. Give I the peace unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. As you come today and say, yes, Lord, I believe. I want to have the peace that Christ gives. The peace that I will know. There's no judgment. There's no condemnation anymore. But he gives me is peace the peace we have in christ number one peace with god number two peace in christ number three peace in the spirit the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace when you open the door of your heart and then the spirit who has been knocking at your door and you give him a chance to walk he convicts you of sin he makes you to confess your sin and then he converts you and your life is turned around and he enters and then he makes announcement i live here now i reside here now and the spirit bear witness in your heart you are a child of god he gives you that joy and love and peace peace in the spirit peace be unto you it's talking about peace among ourselves it tells us in first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 13 it says have peace among yourselves no fighting no quarreling and there is no conflict because peace has now come among us if you have christ the prince of peace and i have christ the prince of peace and we meet together and we live together and we talk together the prince of peace in you the prince of peace in me will bring peace among us and it's talking about the peace we have in our communities the peace we have in our neighborhood and it says peace be unto you peace with god peace with in christ the peace we have in the spirit 
and the peace we have among ourselves. Number five, peace with all men. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14. It says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. You see, if Christ lives in you, if Christ is operating through you, you'll be at peace with everybody. You'll be at peace with all men. If you are aiming for heaven, if you want to get to glory, if you want to see the Lord on the final day, all that fighting spirit, all that spirit of conflict, all the spirit of wanting to conquer your neighbor, all the spirit of wanting to scatter everything, all that will go. And then you're going to have the peace with all men. There are difficult men. God will give you the wisdom to have peace with them. There are injurious men, and God will give you the wisdom to have peace with them. And there are people that are violent in nature, and God gives you the grace of peace with them. Follow peace with all men. Peace with God. Peace in Christ. Peace in the Spirit. Peace among yourselves. Peace with all men. Peace in the family. Husband and wife. Parents and children. Lead the people, benefactors, and the mates at home. The mother-in-law and the wife of the son. The father-in-law and the son who is uh, the son or the son of the, the, the husband of the wife. Peace in the family, in the little family. Peace. That husband and wife, you say you know Christ. He's the prince of peace. You say you have the spirit of God is a spirit of peace. You say you know God is a God of peace. How come? How come that husband and wife cannot be at peace together? Today, the Lord will bring peace in our families in Jesus' name. Peace with God. Peace in Christ. Peace in the spirit peace among yourselves peace with all men peace in my family say it for yourself number seven peace in the church peace in the church christ is the head of the church and he is the prince of peace how come that in a local assembly there's no peace how come in a moderate denomination there is no peace how come in the church at large there is no peace when jesus christ the head of the church is the prince of peace peace will reign in our churches because peace will reign in our hearts and we're going to start today because the truth brings peace and when you accept the truth i accept the truth you believe the truth i believe the truth you embrace the truth i embrace the truth i'm standing for the truth and you are standing for the truth and i remain in the truth and you remain in the truth there'll be peace in our hearts there'll be peace in our lives and from this night we're going to have the peace in jesus name if you are there, you agree with what you are hearing. Where are you? Can you raise up your hand? I said, we'll have peace in Jesus' name. We're spoken about the truth today. And the truth does a lot of things for us. There's blessing in the truth. There's salvation in the truth. And there is forgiveness in the truth. There is transformation in the truth. And there is healing in the truth. And there is deliverance in the truth. And the truth is coming your way right now. That truth will turn your life around before you go today. I said it will turn your life around before you go today. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. The truth you have heard. The word you have heard. You have heard about this man. The proud man. Who was seeking preeminence. And the Lord says. Turn away from that man. Turn away from that way. Turn away from that path. And turn away from that example. You've seen this other one that has the truth. Accepted the truth. And believed the truth. 
truth and he says follow this follow this and jesus is the perfect example of the truth and he says follow him as bowed and eyes closed today you want the lord to forgive your sin you want the lord to place you and you want the lord to have record about you in heaven that your sins are forgiven and it brings his pardon in your heart it brings his peace in your heart it brings his purity in your heart where are you you stand up wherever you you are you say yes i am here where are you raise up your hand there i want this road to transform my life i want you to change my life i want you to bring me this forgiveness and this salvation of the lord where are you raise up that hand and then stand up i want to see you there wonderful wonderful get up there get up there and say yes lord i'm here yes lord i'm here where are you there where are you there you're standing up there i want this truth to transform my life i want this truth to give me forgiveness i want this truth to give me salvation i want this truth to work in a mighty way in my life today where are you stand up wherever you are if you're standing up there come to the front of the pavilion where you are come to the front of the pavilion where you are keep on coming just come down there just come down there and say lord here am i and if you are on the sides just get up and step forward a little and say here i am lord here i am lord here i am lord here i am lord i want this truth to transform my life i'm waiting for you come down come down come down come down for in the pavilion where you are and come to the front right there come to the front right there and say lord here i am lord here I am, Lord, here I am. Come, come, he'll change your life. He'll transform your life. You'll never be the same again. All right, you want to come to the field? Anywhere you are, I give my life to Christ. I give my life to Christ. Lord, I want this truth to change me. I want this truth to transform my life. I want this truth to move me from where I am to where I ought to be. I want your forgiveness. I want your forgiveness. I want your forgiveness. I want your salvation. I want eternal life. I want to change i want to change i want to change all the lying will go all the fighting will go all the strife will go everything evil will get away from your life as you come to the front as you come to the front open uh, open your mouth and close your eyes and say lord here i am lord here i am lord here i am change my life change my life change my life change my life keep on coming it's waiting for you keep on coming it's waiting for you keep on coming it's waiting for you he wants to change your life he wants to transform you and he wants you to avoid he wants you to forsake the example of diotrephes that man of pride that man was cruel that man who was wicked he wants you to forsake that way and for you to say i give my heart to christ i give my life to christ and then he will pardon your sin he will change your life he will give you a turning point right here tonight keep on coming it's waiting for you keep on coming it's waiting for you he will transform your life he will change your life he'll turn you around he'll forgive you he'll give you salvation he'll give you assurance for heaven as we're standing there just open your mouth and talk to the lord lord change my life lord turn my life around lord do something new in my life today give me forgiveness here today transform my life here today change my life here today i give my heart to jesus i give my heart to jesus I will not go back into that way of pride anymore, that way of evil anymore. I will not go back into the darkness anymore. I will not go back to the occultism anymore. Falsehood will not be in my life anymore. In Jesus' name we pray. You raise up your hand. Are you promising the Lord you will not go back to evil? I said, are you promising the Lord you will not go back to evil? Are you promising the Lord that he, you want him to save you and you are going to follow Christ for the rest of your life? I want to hear you, yes. And you're going to abide in the truth for the rest of your life. I want to hear yes. Now raise up those hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
I thank you for this day. Thank you for this hour. Thank you for this moment. I thank you for all these who have come. They abandoned the way of evil. They abandoned the way of error. And they abandoned the way of strife and wickedness. Oh Lord, as they turn away and they repent, and they call upon you to save them, save them in Jesus' name. Forgive their sins in Jesus' name. Transform their lives, Lord. I pray that this day will be a turning point in the life of everyone. Give them peace of mind. Rest in their soul. Write their names in the book of life. Oh Lord, I pray you do it for every one of them right now. Confirm it and let your spirit be a witness in their hearts. They're now children of God. Thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody shouted, Delta, Amen. Hold on, counselors, hold on. Now, we're going to pray for everyone. All those of us who are sitting there, anywhere you are now, everybody will rise up. You will rise up. The truth works mightily and powerfully. When the truth comes, it sets you free. Free from sin. Free from sickness. And free from Satan. And that freedom, total freedom, the Lord will give you today. Let me hear a good amen. Truth will bring healing to you. Truth will bring deliverance to you. Truth will bring blessing unto you. And truth will bring transformation in your life, in your family, in your business. From today, things will never be the same anymore. In Jesus' name. Turning point. Turning point. Everybody shout turning point. Turning point. Turning point. And then uh, greatness coming upon your life. Spiritual greatness. It's your day. You are going to have it now. I said you are going to have it now. Where are you there? I said where are you there? Healing is coming. When you hear the final amen, healing will arrive. When you hear the final amen, deliverance will be there. And the truth will work in your life. Ready? I said ready. Father, in Jesus' name. We glorify your name today because of the truth of your word. Lord, I pray that this truth will bring a turning point in every life tonight. In Jesus' name. The truth that heals will come to your people right now. Sickness, I command you. Come out in Jesus' name. The truth that delivers will set everyone free right now. And I pray that every yoke in your life be broken in Jesus' name. Receive your healing. Receive your deliverance. And receive your freedom. I pray, Lord, every form of sickness here, whatever the name of the sickness, everything will vanish away. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be delivered in Jesus' name. Be set free in Jesus' name. Receive your miracle. Receive your deliverance. Receive the signs and wonders for you today. Lord, confirm it in every life. Thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray. I have got it. I have got it. I have got it. Your blessing will follow you home in Jesus' name.